Yeah, I want to talk about the stakes of tonight's race and the 2024 election with Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, also from Ohio. We just made a key race alert there. Obviously, Vivek, voters there voting yes on issue one to enshrine the right to an abortion in the state's constitution. Do you think that's a warning sign for Republicans? Look, I voted no on that earlier today before flying down here to Miami. But my view is on the merits, our pro-life movement, and I am part of it, needs to be better about the way we discuss this issue. Actually talk about greater access to adoption, to child care, F- further, even go further to sexual responsibility for men. I think that very too few of us are talking about these issues that can say we're not in this. It's not about a men's rights versus women's rights issue. It's a human rights issue. The fact of the matter is Clarence Thomas brought up an example in the Dobbs case of a pregnant woman who was assaulted and asks the question of who in this country would say that that criminal doesn't deserve liability for that death. I haven't met one yet, Caitlin. And so I think we're more united on the pro-life instincts than the pro-life movement has actually been good at representing so far. But we need to talk about the issue very differently in order to bring people along here. I will say that it was also outspent in Ohio by many multiples, the yes versus no. And so the influence of money in politics, I think, showed up in this result as well. Well, a lot of money was spent on the other side. But do you really think it's a, a messaging issue and not just that voters clearly believe that they should have the, the rights that they had when before Roe versus Wade was overturned? Well, I think some of this is substance. It's not just messaging actually being walking the walk when it comes to being pro-life on access to contraception, to adoption, to even child care. And as as I said, a missing lever that we really ought to embrace on the right is greater sexual responsibility for men codified in the law in an era of genetic paternity tests, put more of a burden financially and otherwise on the father when it's a confirmed paternity test. I think those are winning paths forward for us. That combined with different messaging, yes, I do believe, will win many Americans over. If you look at a state like Iowa, not that different in many respects than Ohio. I mean, they're very different states. But when you look at a red versus blue divide, Iowa went for a six-week ban with growing majorities for the legislators who supported it. So I do think the framing and the messaging and the context actually does but matter. Iowa I don't is... think this should be a sign that the Republican Party should abandon a pro-life position. Iowa is Iowa, home to a lot of evangelicals. I mean, Ohio is a deeply red state. You don't think this is a sign that your party's on the wrong side of the abortion issue? I think it is a sign that the Republican Party needs to graduate in how not only we talk about this issue, but putting substance into what it means to be pro-life. And I, for my part, am doing that. I think I'm the only candidate talking about codifying in the law greater sexual responsibility for men. But I think the less we make this about men's rights versus women's rights, but really in substance, say we're all in this together. I think so. I think so. Absolutely. It's going to be up to the voters to decide. It should be driven by the states. And so it's up to the people to speak up at the state level. But I do think that if we frame this issue correctly, this need not be some sort of final sign that we take. This was a lost battle in Ohio today. I'm disappointed about that. I think there are deep reflections in the Republican Party and in the pro-life movement about how to improve from here. But abandoning the pro-life cause, I don't think is the right answer. I think the right answer is opening up other ways where we can walk the walk in terms of being pro-life from adoption to contraception to sexual responsibility for men codified in the law. And I favor all of those things. Just to be clear, you think the issue is how Republicans are talking about abortion or talking about contraception and adoption, not the actual issue of being against abortion access? Not just talking about it, as I mentioned, Caitlin, but I think being willing to stand for substantive provisions in the law that codify greater responsibility for men in cases of confirmed paternity tests and also greater access to options like contraception, adoption, and otherwise. So I think that substantive difference can make a difference. It's not just a verbal question. But yes, I do think that that will change the outcomes versus what we're seeing tonight. Yeah, well, clearly voters in Ohio disagreed since they just voted to pass this by, uh, they did vote to pass this. Indeed, it now is part of the state's Constitution, you talked about how this is a state's issue. Obviously, you're running to be the Republican candidate for president. If you were president, would you sign a federal abortion ban into law if it was on your desk? I've been crystal clear about this. I would not. And the reason why is I'm a 10th Amendment absolutist. I practice what I preach in my commitment to the Constitution. This should not be a federal issue. 
So here's what I do do from a federal perspective stop federal funding for Planned Parenthood. I think the federal government has no place in tilting the scales using money, but I do not think it is the place of the federal government to get involved in either codifying Roe versus Wade into law. But unlike many other Republican candidates, I stand on the side of principle because that's a constitutional limit. Roe versus Wade was correctly overturned, but we have to practice what we preach when it comes to the Constitution. This is an issue for the states. And I say this as somebody who's disappointed by the outcome in Ohio today. But for me, it is about principle over politics when it comes to my commitment to the Constitution. I also think that if we federalize this issue yeah. as Republicans, when the shoe fits the other foot and Democrats are in charge, it will not go well for, for the pro-life cause at the federal level either. More babies, well, unborn babies will die over the next 30 years, I believe, if I this will issue say, is federalized. I will so say, I stand by Mr. That. Ramaswamy, that I mean, Donald Trump predicted, who the, put those Supreme Court justices in place that overturned Roe versus Wade, that this is hurting Republicans at the ballot box. But we have other news about another race in your home state. I want you to stand by for just a moment. We're going to get that update, and, they, and then we'll come back to you in just a moment. We have a new projection uh, for you uh, from Ohio. CNN is projecting that Ohioans have approved a ballot measure to legalize recreational marijuana use for adults. Ohio becomes the 24th state in the nation to make recreational pot use legal. Again, CNN projects the Ohio ballot initiative on marijuana has been approved. Well, Caitlin. Mr. Ramaswamy, we were just talking about how you voted on issue one, the abortion rights issue. How did you vote on the marijuana issue this morning? I voted no on that one specifically for two reasons. One is I think it's an abandonment of the rule of law when you have one set of rules at the federal level, but state laws that contradict federal law. I don't think that helps our commitment to the rule of law. I think it creates a lot of confusion in this country. And also the tax proceeds here were directed towards purposes that I think have no place, you know, equity programs or otherwise that are completely irrelevant to the measure at issue. So having studied it, I came down on the side of no, but I did hear the update that you just provided. And, you know, at the end of the day, we live in a constitutional republic. That means we live by what the people vote for according to the rules of that constitutional republic. And so... You know, that is what it is. And I you, understand that, but I disagree with the outcome that was reached. Do you feel out of touch with your other Ohioans and given the fact that you voted no on the abortion rights issue and you voted no on the marijuana issue and both appear or both have passed? I mean, we're talking about 40s plus percent in each case. So I think to call that out of touch with Ohioans, I think is out of touch, Caitlin, with all due respect. We do have issues thoughts. we need to sort out in this country. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you're asking my thoughts. You're asking me if I feel out of touch because I sided with 45% of people rather than 55% of people or wherever the numbers end up shaking out. The reality is I think we have legitimate substantive debates we ought to have in this country. My view is let's have them respectfully in the open where every citizen's voice and vote counts equally. And you know what? That's the way a constitutional republic works. Our side, I think, needs to do a better job of not only how we message, but how we stand for the substance of our principles. I think there's a reasonable conversation to be had about the federal at the federal level about how we evolve our drug laws. But I think the disconnect between state level laws that are drastically different than the federal laws create confusion and create, I would say, an abandonment of the culture of the rule of law in this country. And that's why I voted no. Yeah, Vivek Ramasamy, great to have you with us on that Ohio news, given you are an Ohio voter. Thank you so much. We'll see you in Miami tomorrow night.